Welcome to Trinity to Go, a ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church in downtown Bismarck. My name is Pastor Martha Harrison, and it is just a joy to be with you this day. This week we're celebrating Epiphany, the last day of the Christmas season, and I'd like to read to you the intro for today. The Feast of Epiphany, which means manifestation, concludes the Christmas season with a celebration of God's glory revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah and Ephesians, that glory is proclaimed for all nations and people. Like the light of the star that guided the Magi to Jesus, the light of Christ reveals who we are, children of God who are claimed and washed in the waters of baptism. We are sent out to be beacons of light of Christ, sharing the good news of God's love to all people. So we gather this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you revealed your Son to the nations by, leading, by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on the nurse's arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephath, all those from Sheba, shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Here ends the reading. Our gospel reading for today comes from Matthew chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel." And Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their country by another road. Here ends our gospel for today. So grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So for the past few days, I've been working um, to put all my Christmas decorations away and 
to get my apartment back to, I guess, where it should be, so to speak. The ornaments have been taken down, the tree is back in its box, the Christmas Village pieces are packed safely away in their boxes, and the lights are wound up and put away with hopes that they won't turn into a big knot by next year. As I was doing all of this, I paused when I got to my nativity scene. And I have my new nativity scene here on the table with me today. I got uh, the peanuts. <laughs> I just, I kind of like them. You might have heard my sermon on Christmas Day, but I like the peanuts. I got this nativity scene. This one's still out. The one I'm talking about was at home. And when I was putting my one at home away, I started to pause at each of the characters and think about them. So I thought about, you know, Mary and Joseph. And I thought, did they even know what hit them? I mean, this couple that experienced angel revelations and gave birth to the Son of God, did they know what their life was going to be like? And then I thought of the, the shepherds and the sheep and how these men who were just going about their day, doing their job, they were kind of the lowest of the low, but they were doing their job and they were awoken by angels that told them that the Savior, the Messiah, had been born and that they needed to go and visit him in Bethlehem. These shepherds, these people who were pretty much nobody in the world at that time, but they went. But then I got to these guys, these wise men. And I really got to thinking about them because we don't often give them much time. In our Christmas celebrations, we just, you know, we might see kids dressed up in bathrobes with a crown on, with the boxes that are wrapped in shiny paper to represent gold and frankincense and myrrh. But do we really think about them? Do we give them a second thought? Do we wonder why they traveled such an extreme distance because of a star? Today, as I said, we celebrate Epiphany. It marks the conclusion of the Christmas season, but it is not an ending. It's a beginning, so to speak. We hear the story, we just heard it, of these wise men from the East who travel a great distance following a star to find the King of the Jews. I do believe that we have this tendency to gloss right over them, we quickly think of them and their gifts and move on. But for some reason this week, and maybe it's because we did decide to celebrate Epiphany on this Sunday. It's actually, um, Epiphany is on Saturday this week, but because it was so close, we decided to do that. But maybe because we are celebrating Epiphany, that I started to think more deeply about these guys and, and wondering about their motivation, their experience, and more. So here are some of my thoughts. First, these wise men had been studying for quite some time. They didn't just show up, look up into the sky one night and see the star and think, oh, we're going to travel. They knew their history. They had an understanding of more than just their own religion because, you see, they're not Jewish. They practiced this re religion called Zoroastrianism. It was kind of a precursor to modern-day Islam. Their study wasn't just in the ancient writings or scrolls that they were studying, but they were keen observers of the world around them. And because of that study and their observation, they were able to recognize a significant sign when it appeared. They knew that it was something special. Second, when they saw the star and they started putting the pieces together, they were willing to take this extra step to travel, to confirm what they had learned, to confirm what they had suspected was happening, that a Messiah, that the King of the Jews had been born. These wise men took a huge risk. What would have happened if they'd traveled that whole way and then they were wrong? They embarked on this journey with just this general idea of what they were searching for. And then in Jerusalem, they, they asked for further direction from Herod and his scribes. And we know that may not have been the best of ideas, but that's what they did. 
And the scribes identified that prophecy that we heard from Micah that, that designates Bethlehem as the birthplace, the small town that was just a couple miles from Jerusalem. But even though they knew it, they knew this prophecy, the scribes showed no interest in going and checking out what these wise men were saying. They're unable to make this connection from what they're learning to what might be going on just a couple miles away from them. It was these outsiders, these wise men, who were able to do that. So third, the wise men left Jerusalem and went to the house in Bethlehem. And yes, it was more than likely a house because remember this was several months or maybe even up to two years after Jesus was born. They arrived at the house with their gifts and they in that instant received confirmation of what they had learned and what they had predicted, Mary and the child. And what did they do? These wise men responded with all the gratitude that they could muster. They bowed down and worshiped the child. They were believers, even though they were outsiders, Gentiles, foreigners, people who practiced a completely different religion than Judaism. And finally, after experiencing all that, they were still open to more learning, still open to visions and insight. King Herod had asked them to come back and tell him where the king, this new baby was so that he could go and pay him homage. We all know that that wasn't what he wanted to do. He was threatened by the presence of another king. But instead of going back to Jerusalem, the wise men, were told in a dream to go home by another road and that's that's what they did. So those are my thoughts right now on the wise men and you might be thinking well that's nice but what does that have to do with us? Well Epiphany is about revelation. It's about the light of Christ being revealed among us. The light of Christ being revealed to all people not just the Jewish people. That revelation was not just a one-time thing. God is revealed to us each and every day, and we are given this light to share with others. God's love is revealed to us. God's salvation is revealed to us. And we are given that light to share with others. You see, Epiphany is this promise that God is among us, that God is here even when we don't notice, even if we don't notice the signs. But, we, but how can we notice those signs? How can we see God among us? We talk about looking for God working in our world a lot, but how can we get better at that? How can the example of the wise men help us to see God's revelation among us and to share those with others? Well, first, we need to study and learn. The more we know about God and our faith, the more we're able to see the signs of God among us. Opening our eyes to the revelation of God begins with the study of God's Word. By doing Bible study, going to Bible study, or reading on our own. Second, study, study also involves being attentive to the world around us and watching what's going on and not making assumptions on what we think we know. The wise men studied a great deal, but they also watched for the signs in their world. However, the scribes, those religious people in Jerusalem, were not attentive to the world around them, and their study led them nowhere. So you see, when something in our world lines up with something we've been studying, We get this nudge to go investigate, to move, and to really see, to really see God, just as the wise men did. Finally, it is good to seek guidance. The wise men didn't necessarily make the right choice in that department at first, but they recognized that and did not return to Herod. Learning about God and God's actions in our world is not always clear or straightforward. It's an ongoing process, 
It's a blessing to be able to study with one another and to seek guidance from one another as we walk this journey of faith. Many times when I sit in a Bible study, whether I'm leading or not, things are revealed to me by what someone else says, by someone else's take on what we're studying or someone else's perspective. When I hear those things, my mind is opened and I learn things. And it's such a great gift to be able to study, not only study God's Word, but to study God's Word and the world around us with others. So yes, today we do celebrate Epiphany and it is a great blessing to do so. It's all about God's revelation among us. But it is not just the ending of the Christmas season, but it is the beginning because God is daily being revealed to us and we are being called to share God's love and light with those around us. Maybe Epiphany is something that we live out each day for our lives, in our lives learning about God, opening our eyes to the revelation of God among us in our world, and opening our eyes also to the needs of people around us. Asking for help and guidance when we need it, supporting one another as we walk this journey of faith, and sharing the light that was given to us, this light that reveals God's salvation with everyone, insiders, and outsiders, those like us and those different from us, those that we like and those that we don't like. The wise men showed us that God's love has been revealed to all people through the birth of Christ. May we walk in God's light, looking for signs of God among us and sharing this light and love with others. Amen. Let's take a moment now to join in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for this opportunity to celebrate Epiphany, to remember that you were revealed to us in the birth of Christ and that you are continually revealed to us each and every day. Open our eyes to the signs that you are among us Help us to trust that even when we don't see the signs or notice the signs that you are still with us, that you don't leave us, that you are working in our world to bring, making, working in our world to make all things new. We give you thanks, O oh God, for your healing presence in our lives. But there are many among us who are struggling, struggling in mind, body, or spirit. We ask that you bring your healing presence to them. Help them to know that you are with them and comfort them. Be with those that are, giving, that are caregivers, O oh God. It's not easy work. Bring them rest and comfort. Be with those that are awaiting a new diagnosis. Guide their medical staff to, to come up with the best treatment. Be with those who are mourning the loss of a loved one and those who are watching vigil as someone is of their, one of their loved ones is dying. Comfort them in the promise of eternal life with you. There are so many, like I said, oh God, that are suffering. We raise up to you those that we name now in the silence of our heart. Thank you, O oh God, for walking with them and bringing them comfort and peace. Continue to guide us, O oh God, in the ministry that you call us to. Those things that you guide us to do in our everyday life as we see the needs of the world around us. Empower us to step outside of our comfort zone to help someone in need. Bless us with the resources and the ability to help. We place all these prayers at your feet, O oh God, confident that you hear them and you answer them. We pray them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me for this uh, short time of worship here on this day of Epiphany. Uh, we're just so thankful. I don't have a whole lot of announcements, but um, thankful for your continued support of the Ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church, including the Ministry of Trinity to Go. Uh, there are many ways that you can make an offering, whether you mail in an offering or on our website. You can go out there, and um, there are ways to give online. We are also in the process of resettling, sponsoring a, a family, an immigrant family, a refugee family from Costa Rica. On our Facebook page, and I, yep, on our Facebook page, there are pictures of the, the needs that we have. And it ranges from anything from like a couple of trash cans to a couch or a table. Uh, in a few days, we'll also release what the, the grocery list is as well. If this is something that is of interest to you, you could, and you have questions, you can email me at harrison at trinitybismarck.com. You can also give me a call in the office, and I'm more than willing to chat with you. you could, there are ways you can donate from the needs list. You can don't make a gift so that we can shop for the things on the needs list. And there's also the opportunity to come and help us clean and set up the apartment. This is all happening within the next couple weeks. It's kind of a quick process when this happens. When Bismarck Global Neighbors receives names of families that are being resettled, it, it's a pretty fast process. So if you're willing to help. Uh, reach out to me and I can give you ways that you can help. But it's just so glad that you're here with us and uh, we hope that you have a great week. But before we go, receive a blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.